Now, from America's crypto markets, let's now turn to America's proxy war. Now, this is the conflict in Ukraine. It's been 477 days since it started, and there is no breakthrough whatsoever. The war is dragging on. In fact, it has only escalated ever since Ukraine's counteroffensive began. Now, just look at these developments from week one of Russia's topmost generals have been killed. Now, a dam at Zaporizhia has also been destroyed, the Nova Kokovka Dam. Belarus has started to receive delivery of tactical nuclear weapons from Russia. And Moscow has threatened the use of depleted uranium weapons. It has also claimed its very first kill by artificial intelligence. Now, these developments indicate just one thing. It just means that the war has now entered a whole new phase. And the question is, how long will this phase now last? Or will it culminate into some kind of an end of this war? Now, I'll tell you what the Americans actually think of this counteroffensive themselves. Senior U.S. officials say that Ukraine, in fact, faces a very difficult fight. That its campaign to reclaim territory is likely to come at a very high cost. Now, which American generals are these who are saying that this counteroffensive will go on for a very long time? The first one is, of course, the chief of the American staff, General Mark Milley. He's the chairman of the Joint Chief of Staffs, who on Thursday, while addressing a gathering of the U.S.-led contact group at the NATO headquarters in Brussels, he was categorical in his assessment. He said that it was far too early to put any estimates on how long the Ukrainian counteroffensive could in fact last. But what he did say is this, and let me quote his exact statement. Now, Ukraine has begun its attack, and they're making some steady progress. This is a very difficult fight. It's going to be a very violent fight, and it will likely take a considerable amount of time, and it will happen with a very high cost. Also present at the meeting was the U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, and he told the meeting that Kiev needs both short-term and long-term support, as the war is a marathon and not a sprint. Listen in to what Lloyd Austin had to say. We've given Ukraine's forces important training and impressive capabilities. But war is fluid, dynamic, and unpredictable. Ukraine's fight it's not some easy sprint to the finish line. And our message remains clear. We will stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes. Ukraine has overcome so many obstacles, but more lie ahead. And Ukraine's troops and citizens do not stand alone. Thanks to the historic support of nations of goodwill from around the world, Ukraine is well positioned for the challenges still to come. All right, so those are the statements by the Americans. These are the American assessments, and they are quite clear. This counteroffensive is not going to end tomorrow. It won't end at the end of this week. It may not end at the end of this month. This is a war that will drag on, and the Ukrainian counteroffensive will drag. Now, the American leaders are, in fact, trying to imply that the counteroffensive is, in fact, going to be a long and a hard one. And it is not going to be without its many difficulties that will come up. Now, you see, Ukraine's gains so far have been very modest, even though the counteroffensive has been ongoing for at least more than a week. Ukraine claims that it has liberated a few villages and has also carried out a few strikes. But these gains actually don't add up to very much. So the situation on the ground is not that of a triumphant one. It is not about claims of liberation that Kiev had come up with earlier this week. This has unnerved a lot of the policymakers who are sitting in the West. They're preparing for the possibility of Ukraine's counteroffensive, in fact, falling well short of their expectations. Publicly, they are offering their unwavering support for Ukraine. They're pledging to support it for as long as it takes. But if the impending fighting yields very limited gains, then the officials have expressed pretty privately that they fear that they could in fact be headed with a two head they could in fact be dealing with a two headed monster that is attacking it from the hawkish and the dovish ends of the spectrum now what does this mean it means that one side would say that ukraine's advances have worked and would have worked had the administration given kiev everything that it had asked for while the other side will claim that ukraine's shortcomings in fact prove that there is simply no possibility of Ukraine winning back the territory that it has lost to Russia in the war so far. It is a clear case of a catch-22 situation, to be honest, and it doesn't take into account as to how America's European allies will react. 
They may see a peace negotiation between Ukraine and Russia as a more attractive option if Kiev cannot prove on the battleground that it can in fact win this war. Because remember, this is a war that is not going to end anytime soon as many assessments have put that this is going to be quite clearly an intergenerational conflict. But it will all hinge upon how much more weapons will the NATO allies be willing to pump on behalf of Ukraine into the battlefields. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.